what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoyed. We talked about the game. We prefaced pretty much everything we said uh, with a tagline of subject to, ta- you know, subject to change per film review. Well, uh, watched the film for three hours yesterday, <laughs> combed through it play by play. And uh, so now I think this first hour, we will give you our solidified, this is what actually happened takes. And if I sound chipper, uh, partially, that's because knowledge is power and freedom, right? Like like when you go and you, even though it's frustrating in some ways when you see some of this stuff, when you start to fully understand it, well then... All the uh, the 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 anxieties take you know uh, the the anxieties born of ignorance are taken away because you can clearly see what happened and so um, Jake I think I think how we go with it I'll just kind of run through this and you can because you watch it as well agree disagree uh, with with maybe with what I'm saying and and just chop it up um, sorry boys I hope everybody's doing great we're just gonna dive right in uh, look my main takeaways um, from this game are, 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 are as follows. I would say on the whole, like overall, I feel more confident uh, than I even did yesterday, even though it's a line that we used, that this game was most about FSU uh, being really good. Like what, what, what else you did, uh, there's a lot to work on. There's still a ton of question marks about the coaching and play department execution questions, sure. But the LSU team that I saw on film is going to be capable of beating a lot of teams, right? Now, I don't know if I feel they're championship caliber right now, um, but like they they are they are not a bad football team. There's a lot of good on that film. It's just that FSU is really good. And FSU had one glaring advantage in that receiver versus secondary matchup yeah. that they took full advantage of. And that's why I feel, and we're gonna talk a lot of Dim Brock and House today. And because I think both got outcoached. However, House is kind of playing with a tough hand, Jake. I mean, I th- th- this was such a weakness in terms of matchup. I don't know how you can almost scheme your way out of it. And then the pass rush isn't even winning, not because pass rush is bad. I actually feel pretty good about the D-line coming out because that Florida State offensive line is really good. Yeah. So, again, the, the first foremost main takeaway is that this was absolutely less about LSU being bad and more about Florida State just being better. Yeah, and we could go through plays. We can go through first and one on the one against Florida State in that opening drive where, you know, Jaden Daniels pulls that and scores nine times out of ten. Yeah. And he would have beaten the edge defender to the end zone every single time. And I'm saying nine out of ten just because I'm not speaking in absolutes. So there's plays out there that we can break down and talk about. But to T-Bob's point, and I agree, like defensively, think about the coverage that you got beat on. You were there. You just didn't have the Jimmy and Joe that they had on that play. Like you can go to a a couple of different times. And even the play that we broke down yesterday where you put Perkins on the edge, he goes untouched, but Jordan Travis, being a savvy vet, gets the ball out. Like – it's hard as a rusher when you beat somebody and don't get touched and still have no chance at the quarterback. But you had a veteran quarterback that was getting the ball out of his hands every single time extremely fast. And so, in Deuce Chestnut, we talked about it, and I'm sure you watched that play. Like, he's there. Yeah. He's got great coverage. Yeah. There was nothing he was going to be able to do in that. So, defensively, I think you're right. And I think also, though, they, you got schemed by a veteran quarterback who understood, like, if this is going to beat us, it's going to be on me. So I've got to get the ball out extremely fast. Well, and 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 then so when the rush is not getting home and you're losing the man-to-man matchups, well, then you start playing on the zone as well. Well, you're yeah. mixing zone the entire time because you feel so badly about the matchup. And a veteran quarterback and veteran receiving court, they just find the holes. They just And, and the linebackers look completely lost in zone. Like, that, that is one Ooh. awful thing. I, I, I can't imagine how you made it through all of camp and decided to keep Harold Perkins, and that's fine. Even Omar Spates didn't look. Like, they just never look. It felt like... Uh, like it felt like, like we, we, sometimes when you see an offensive lineman get in space and they're just not used to it and they feel very uncomfortable kind of looking around the room like, what's going on? I'm not supposed to be here. It o- just Omar was almost playing like a nickel Sam. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it wasn't truly like 
any kind of a Mike linebacker. Like it was out in space space. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it was, it was, and, and I think a lot of this was Florida state, you know, a, a, a kind of forcing them into this with their advantage in their play and, and, and bad execution certainly, but, but it was the most passive linebacker play mm-hmm. I can possibly remember. Like the linebackers never felt like they had good reads on anything. They were catching constantly. They couldn't, they, they, they were confused by the movement. And that would be other, my, one of my other main takeaways, uh, Jake, to jump to uh, kind of maybe something that's a bit more scheme-based. And we'll get to Jaden Daniels, Harold Perkins, and everything as well. But um, unfortunately, it is impossible, in my opinion, it is impossible to watch this film and not come away a bit disappointed in just the overall design of the LSU offense. Because, look, I, I'll say this. I thought Mike Denbrock was all right, right? And and, and certainly players could have done better. I mean, the, the the Kyron Lacey drops, of which there were many, were just as crucial as you knew they were in real time. Um, but overall, again, I think it's, you just, if you watch this film, it's impossible not to be jealous of the style of offense how that Mike Norvell is running uh, versus what you brought to bear. LSU just felt so stale in comparison. Um, one, one of the things that Florida State seems to do an incredible job of, Jake, is there's just so much, there's so much swirling movement. Linemen are pulling constantly yeah. even when the plays go in the other way. There's concepts that are interlinked that are building on top of one another. LSU just felt like a collection of single plays. Like, there was no greater chemistry. There's no greater composition to the whole. There's no pre-snap movement. Nine times out of ten, you're just asking the lineman to just head up zone block. Florida State's giving a very good offensive line angles. Yeah. And, and, and they're confused. And they got jet sweep. Like, where's all the jet sweep motions? Where's all this pre-snap movement? Instead of just, like, if you go up against a team that's better than you, one thing you can't do is just line it up and run it. And and my God, if I see another seven man protection, I will, I I I I I I don't know. I'll I'll commit a heinous crime, and and I get it. Football people will tell you, well, you have to be willing to run a seven man protection. I I no, I don't need it. I don't need it. It is so painfully clear. The more people you add to protection, the worse Jane Daniel gets. Jane yeah. Daniels is at his best when it's five man, and even if there's pressure. He has room to operate because every Jake, every single time they hold someone in, the guy who is supposed to be guarding him just becomes a spy. Yeah, and everything gets clogged. Or a dog. I mean, and you just have way, yeah, yeah, and you just have yeah, or a dog, and you yeah. just have guys airplane airplane arms chilling, doing nothing. Yep. And Jane has nowhere to go because everything's clogged up. I know this is crazy. I wouldn't even run a single six man protection. Be bold. I thought I just like. I would I would have the back as that constant outlet. I just I I mm, by far my biggest disappointment coming out of this game. And we'll get to Jaden because Jaden could have been better in a lot of different ways as well. And 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 maybe I'm starting to come around to the idea that the ceiling is what it is. But in terms of setting him up for success, when you watch that Mike Norvell offense work with Jordan Travis, and really Travis is very is better in some really important areas. But when you watch the design of the Norvell offense, then you watch the Denbrock offense, it just didn't. It felt it felt like one was new age and one was old. If you go back and you watch the first two plays of the game for LSU, well, they did the things that you're talking about. Yeah, so That's good. what's wild. <laughs> it, I mean, you had Aaron Anderson, jet sweep motions, yes. and you had everyone spread out. And what T-Bob's talking about with the back, North Turner used to call it patrol in the area. Right, you got your arms out. You're just Ugh. looking. He hated. It. He's like, "Why are you patrolling the area? Like, either block or get out. And if your guy doesn't come, then get out into your route because it clogs everything up." But that's that was one of the puzzling things is you had success with the movement. So yeah. Aaron Anderson had been talked about all training camp long and his speed and what he can do. And so yeah, it makes sense. Put him on the move. Get attention to number one and spread everything out. And so. You do that, and then you hit a big gander to Trey Bradford, and then you come back and you do the same thing, right? Yep. You bring him across the formation, guy follows him, safety comes down, perfect play because Mason Taylor is going to go right by the safety that's coming down, and it's another big gainer. And so I'm not sure why that went away. I think it was there, and it worked perfectly, and then they just decided, nah, we're just, nah. I, I got to go find the, the number of offensive plays. I'm not sure what happened with Aaron Anderson 
I know he had the punt fumble, but I want to say it was single-digit plays on offense, which is wild considering the first two plays on offense he was out there. Yeah, uh, six snaps. That's what it says right here. So he played six snaps. I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and Jake, it's just so, like, it's so frustrating because it's just so many wasted resources. And, and and look, to be clear, in some of those seven and six man protections, Jake, there were open guys that Jaden didn't find. But again, you have to be willing to adjust to what your player does well. And he just doesn't do well when he gets all clogged up in the middle like that. Like I would take a free rusher where they just bring more than you have and let Jaden create with space over trying to block everybody up. Yeah, because he likes to find those little channels to be able to yes. escape. And you saw him a lot in the game try to find that little channel, and it looked like he was about to escape. And then all of a sudden, here comes a Florida State player bringing him down right at the last moment because it was because kind of he doesn't rug- have to do anything because the tight end is sitting there just doing yeah. this. And so you have two extra spies because you got the running back and the tight end helping out, chipping guys. I wouldn't do. I mean, and plus, you have a good offensive line. Is the worst part. Like, that's one of the main right. takeaways from film. They weren't great, but it's a good Florida State defensive line. Like, but they I mean, were Jared solid Burst in didn't pass have a sack in the game. Yeah, yeah, they were great I mean, in pass pro. He's maybe the nation's best rusher. Did he have pressure? Yeah, he's going to have pressure. Yeah. I mean, that's just who he is. But, you know, they take the sack away. It was an incomplete pass, so he didn't technically have a sack in the game. And you were able to hold up enough. Was it clean? No, it's not the cleanest game you're going to play. I mean, no. it got muddy at times, but there weren't free releasers. I've seen... Infinitely worse yes. LSU O line film through the yeah. years. Like this O line is good. Um and look, the offense as a whole, not an object abject disaster. Really good first half. Second half, the crucial mistakes kill drives, and then you credit Florida for Florida State for taking advantage and their very good offense taking advantage of your weak secondary scoring touchdowns and just burying you, right? They broke you. They broke you over your knee like Bane and Batman in that second half. Um, but the offense was not an abject disaster. Uh, offensively, my most disappointing part, we'll get to Jaden next segment, but my most disappointing part was, I like I said, kind of the play design, play calls. Uh, the only thing on this film, Jake, that I would say is an abject disaster remains a return game. It's unbelievable. It is unreal how you could be so awful at it last year and then come back out this year and be so awful in the exact same ways. Yeah, and you thought you got it fixed. I think a lot of us were excited. Uh, any practice that you went out to, you saw... Aaron Anderson flash. And again, I need to know why he played six plays, why he didn't go back out there as the returner. I know he had the muff. But it's not like that we saw uh, Clayton catch that first one no. uh, comfortably. Well, that's the thing. we got to remember, he didn't even start at the returner. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Yeah, Clayton I mean, did. Clayton did. So they had some sort of sketchiness around him to yeah. begin with. Then Clayton looked sketchy as hell. And then Aaron Anderson, when he did return it, I mean, we got to be fair. It didn't look explosive. And those Hell kick no. Those kickoff returns looked like they were like in slow motion. They did, 100%. It was crazy. So that's, just my, that's my point. It's not, it's not even just the fumble. It's not the sketchy. It's every single piece of the return. It was awfully blocked. Again, I, I, I'm, I was shocked in the offseason they didn't commit to like a full-time true-ass special teams coach. They didn't. They want a bunch of guys to coach each group. And, uh, well, it looked pretty haphazard. Um, so that's the biggest disappointment to me because offensively, yeah, you're still going to be fine this year. Defensively, they were just better than you, but they're still and with May Smith come back. You're still going to be good and you'll figure out, I think how to use perk better. Like, um, but, but there's no, what's the excuse for the return game? I don't, I don't know that you're going to find one. Exactly. I don't know that you're going to find one. Um, that so much of that is the coaching portion of it. Yeah. You can't just hand wave that. But also, it's a buy-in. And we've talked about it a thousand times. And I know it sounds like, okay, yeah, we get it. Y'all played special teams. But it was. Like, it was something where you were prideful in it. And I just, I've, I've been around special teams coordinators my entire life that just, be it from from Derek Dooley when I first got here, to Bradley Dale Pivoto, to, to Coach Cross in San Diego, to Rich Basacci in San Diego, whoever it was. Like, where there was a real pride about it. And, and everybody's hating on Harbaugh because he had the Wii Fence thing. The other, <laughs> well, Rich Basachi has been saying that for a decade. Hell yeah. Like, everybody in this room, he called it the Wii Fence. He said, you know what's the Wii Fence? It's the only time that all of us get together with the common goal. True. It's the only time. True. It's the only time that we all get together and we're all trying to be on the field at the same time. 
said it doesn't matter what you play. He would make the quarterbacks sit in the first 10 minutes of the special teams meeting. They had no purpose in there. They weren't doing anything. Yeah, but he said, no, no we're going to be together for the first 10 minutes of this meeting because it, it takes all of us. There might be a time, Philip, where you have to come in and hold on a field goal. It might, right? So we're going to sit here for the first 10 minutes. And so there's like a complete buy-in. And you have to, you can't pout. You can't sulk. I'm not playing offense. I'm not playing defense. Yeah. You can't do any of that. You make your way on teams a lot of times. I mean, how many LSU teammates did you have mm -hmm. that were war daddies that ended up being really good players? Jacob Cochera. Yeah. Right? He was a war daddy, and then he became a good defensive player. I mean, Craig Stelts, same situation. Like Ron we Brooks. Go, I mean, whatever. Ron, goes we can on go on. on and on and on. Curtis Taylor. But, like, there has to be a real buy-in. I watched that tape as a, a special teams guy. I'm like, yeah, the returner doesn't look great, but where's he supposed to run? No, no, I know. The blogging was awful. Yeah. You, you know what's crazy? I don't even watch I don't even watch the snaps anymore. The special team snaps. Second year in a row. I just stopped <laughs> watching during the game. So like, I, it's not even worth it. So I don't care what I'm looking at. Jake understands it better anyway. Like I'm not I'm 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 done. It, it's 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 disgusting. Um but again, overall, my takeaways are not that negative. I just that that triggers me a bit because there's no excuse for it to still be like that. Wow, Jake. What incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.